uh, what we're going to do is um, we have the photo which we would like to show you. And uh, we also have the ODK app, which we would, would like to talk about, plus a few remarks on the data that we have been collecting so far. So this is how we'll do it. Uh, I will ask um, Noel to first of all, present the visitor site of the Maroi Biodiversity Portal. And then uh, after he finishes, I will come in and talk about the uh, data control mechanisms that we have built into the Malawi Biodiversity Portal. So that will involve uh, a little bit of uh, an illustration of the dashboard that we use to manage the data. So Noel, are you there? Yes, I am here. Please, you can go ahead. All right, thank you. Um, let me start with sharing the screen. All right, um, thank you for giving me this opportunity to share about the Maui Diversity Portal. Um, first of all, I'm starting with the landing page of the entire portal. As it was mentioned earlier, it's, it involves the, it has a, it has um, a front end of um, freshwater and pollinator with the same back end. So here today, our focus is on the freshwater data portal. Once you click on the freshwater data portal, you, you go in, you you go into the in the freshwater side of the Malawi Diversity Portal. So here on the landing page, you are give you are given the opportunity to access several types of data. There is occurrence data and data sets, occurrence data and data sets that have been collected in the field. Um, on the landing page, you have you can search data in terms of searching of fish species, um, water bodies, and also um, specific data sets. Currently we have the museum data, fish data of October, 2020. Um, so when you go on the data sets, if, if, we can, if we can just view on the data sets that we have, um, like I said here, you have specific data sets that have been uploaded onto the portal and you are given the opportunity to download the data set. For example, you can click this um, literature data set. It gives, you, it gives you metadata of the data here. So if you want to download the data sets, you can click here where it's included download and you input the information that your personal information. The most important part is here on the email where that's where all the data the data set will be sent to once you once you once you input everything this and click the get download link the link to download the data set will be sent to the email provided here so yeah that's a, that's about the um that's about the data set of that's where you can have that's how you can download this the portal data here about the data sets on um, on the data sets that you've that you've, that you've actually selected. Um, the other part is on the occurrence data for a specific species occurrences. Um, for example, here there is a um, is a summary of the freshwater data of, of the freshwater occurrences. Here you can filter up in base of and based on, on, on based on the taxonomic rank, here is this, um, a summary of all that is in the data in the in the in the in the um, in the portal is a summary of um, of all the data sets of, of all the um, occurrence data about the specific species, and you can filter based on taxonomic rank. Here you can start with the family taxon rank. And all this thing, it will give you about like um, a, an overview of, of the data about about this species. For example, here it's written here that it's found in the water body. This um, on, on the occurrences of this species. For example, here it's showing about where where it was recorded, um, who identified it, locality, and the identification rate of this specific fish species. 
So here is about the occurrence that of this species known as bagrass. I don't know how you pronounce that. <laughs> yeah, so here is now a summary of the occurrences of this specific species. If we go back to the home, okay, back to the freshwater data portal, like I said earlier, you can search occurrence data of other others like um, um, water bodies. For example, if we can go on the on Lake Malawi water body, here is the metadata of the data set collected from from Lake Malawi. It shows number of occurrences from this water body. It gives you here is the number number of species that are found in this water body. And if you want to get a if you want to get the data about the occurrences found in Lake Malawi, it's the same previous process where you can click on the download occurrences from Lake Malawi and it will give you, um, you can input all the information that you have about the, the like, like, like uh, as, as, I, as I explained earlier, it's about the same process as well. In, in, this data will be sent to your email. So, uh, that's the data that we that is in the that is in the fresh water. This is an overview of how you can collect the data about uh, about how you can collect data sets and occurrence data from the Malawi biodiversity portal. So another thing that the, the portal gives it is that it gives you a gallery of the species of the species that are found on the in the portal. So if we go up here and click on the gallery, um, it will give you summary of all the species in the pod of, of the species that are found on the on the portal. Here are some pictures of the of the species that we collected. So if you want to have an overview of, of the of, of the species of how they look, like if you want to have a clear picture of the species and and see how they uh, uh, how they were taken, how they look like a, 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 a like I can say a picture of the actual or kinds of the specific species. You can get it from this this place here on the gallery. Um, the portal as well gives you the ability to access specific publications publications that have been developed by other writers and other researchers. Here on top, if you click on the resources tab, you find the link written publications. And if you click here, it, it gives you a list of all the publications that have been up, that have been uploaded onto the portal. And if you want to preview their publication, you can click here. Which, for example, here you can see there's there are about three publications that have been uploaded on the portal. For example, there is location and roles of deep pools in Lianga River. This publication, if you want access, if you want to have a preview of the publication, you can click on the right. And it will it will give you a preview of the publication. Here is a preview of the publication, and you can scroll down and you can see a preview. But if you want to get this whole publication, you can click on the download button here. Where you can, it's, a, it's the same process as well. You input the information and your email address, and the link to download this publication will be sent to the email that you have provided. Um, um, the other thing is um, the, the portal gives you the, we have, an, um, we have integrated and we have, we have added, we have made the portal to, to use as an API as well. For other for other people to use, for example, here on top, if you if you click on the AP, on the tab, you click on the API, it gives you to this page where you can sign up, and um, if another person who's who's developing something, but wants to use portal data, can read, can sign up and and can sign up here, and he'll be given an API key, and he'll be able to access portal data through this. To that, to the API provided by the portal, um, you can access some um, data sets, uh, occurrence data links, uh, publishers, species details. But this, all this, is pending on approval from the 
from the portal administrators. So, and also there's a plan that we can, there's also a plan that we can link it to GBIF where we can update species data and also push uh, update species data um, on the on the portal and also push to GBIF as well. Um, lastly, lastly, the, lastly, I can say that the, this portal provides a lot of things. It provides a lot of functionalities, which I, which I cannot really explain at this moment, but if, um, if there are specific questions, um, at the top here, you can have this, you have this help option here where you can get help about this portal. And specifically, I, I can talk about, I can talk about the frequently asked, asked questions here. Um, when you click on the frequently asked questions, it will give you an over on, on uh, like uh, some help on how to use the portal and what the portal provides for the users, for the, for the users as well. For example, you, there are links on how, how one can download fish, species occurrences and also some other information, other usual, other common in questions that might be asked by, by portal users. For example, there's what is the mild by by diversity portal? There's an overview right here. So, if there are extra information that might that that might that you might need to know, and if there are other issues that someone might want to want to be enlightened with, you can all find it here on the frequently asked questions. So for now, I can stop here. Um, over to my colleague, Dr. Mapiza, to present on the on the admin side. Thank you, Dr. Mapiza. All right. Thank you, Noah, for the uh, explanation on how the visitor site looks like. So I will now share my screen and uh, take you through the take you through the dashboard of the Malawi Biodiversity Portal. So just a moment. Right. So please someone just confirm for me whether you're able to see my screen. Looks good, yes, we, we can see it see. clearly. Thank you. So uh, like Noel pointed out, um, we have two sites within the Malawi Biodiversity Portal. Uh, the first one is the Freshwater Data Portal and the other one is the Pollinator Data Portal. As time goes and we have more interested uh, parties joining, like maybe from the plant uh, field or from maybe the builds field, then we can continue to build on the Malawi Biodiversity Portal by in including those additional sub-portals, if I may call them. So this is where those tabs or those uh, buttons that take you to the exact specific portal will be added. So let me just take you to the freshwater data portal again. And then I will log in into the dashboard. Now, the reason I want to log in is I want to just demonstrate how we have built in data control features into the Malawi Biodiversity Portal because one of the concerns that we had besides requiring um, more publishers in Malawi to put their data in electronic format and include it on the uh, Malawi Biodiversity Portal, we would like that data as it comes in to be in good quality. So we are trying to uh, figure out a way of uh, encouraging data to be published in uh, a, a good format, like good format, as well as uh, it should be of high quality and it should be credible. So what we did was to introduce several users within the dashboard at different levels. Obviously, the first type of user would be the super user. So I'll just quickly log in and just show you how this looks. I will not explain much on the exact uh, tasks that 
the super user does, but this is basically the uh, person who is in charge of the whole um, biodiversity portal. He's the one who does the installations and then he begins to add admins and uh, he may add uh, publishers as well. So he will have a whole lot of features available to him, but his main role as of now is to just register the admin. So what he will do is he will register admins at two levels. So for now, looks like I've lost my connection somehow. So just, there we are, so it's back. So um, what that super user will do is to register an admin for now for the freshwater site, Malawi Biodiversity Portal, the freshwater uh, site, and then register another admin for the pollinator site. So once he's done that, then his main responsibility regarding the data publication is done. So next, we, we have also created that user whom I called the admins for the freshwater and another admin for the pollinator. So I will now log in as an ad admin for the freshwater site. So if I log in as admin for the freshwater site, then I am able to actually add users and uh, those users will actually end up being publishers. So these will be institutions, just a moment, sorry, I've picked the wrong account. So these users whom the admin will add will actually be the publishers themselves. So these publishers will actually have the responsibility of adding, of adding uh, contributors who are the exact um, publishers of the data. So the admin will be someone like Noel who comes from the ICT department at Luana and his main role is to ensure that the portal is running and the publishers are able to come in and add data. So once he has registered a publisher, it will be an institution like maybe Luana, it will be an institution like probably Chasara College, or it could be MAST, all these are universities within Malawi. It could also be the Department of uh, Fisheries who also collect data from the lake and from rivers. It could be another institution like maybe IUCN Malawi, they would like to publish. So the admin's role is to make sure that these uh, institutions have an account which is functional and it is working as a publisher account. So he will liaise with the responsible person and ask for uh, a name and contacts of uh, an individual within that institution who is quite conversant with uh, websites, is quite conversant with uh, data management and he will provide an email. So this admin will create a username and then give those rights to that particular individual within that institution. So that individual will be responsible for the data publication of that particular institution. He will not himself be the uh, like publisher, or if I, I may call it, he will not himself be the one adding data, but his role is to manage all the individuals within that institution who would like to be uploading data. So right now, I will log out of the admin account, and then I go in as a publisher. So I'm logging in just to illustrate that as you enter the site using different uh, account types, what you access will be different. So at this point, uh, when the publisher logs in, then he's able to go to the users, like um, I've, I've selected users on the uh, left-hand panel, and he's able to add contributors. So these contributors will actually be the scientists themselves who have collected data from the field. They have created a nice template that can be uploaded on the 
portal. So his role as a publisher is to ensure that the contributors have access to this particular site. And of course, uh, they can also recommend reviewers to us as, uh, the, as Luana, the institution that is managing the Malawi Biodiversity Portal, but uh, they may not be able to actually assign reviewers to their own data sets, although they can recommend, but they will not be able to uh, like give a data set to a reviewer of their choice. So basically the publisher, what he's doing is to make sure that within his institution, all the scientists who would like to publish data, they have access. So once he's registered the contributors, then each contributor will have an email address and he will also have a password which he can use to actually go into the portal and upload data. So right now, I am going to log in as a contributor. And uh, if I do log in as a contributor to the Malawi Biodiversity Portal, then I am now able to add data sets. So you see now that the left-hand panel has way less uh, commands available. In fact, it's just an option for adding a data set. So the contributor comes in and he's able to create a data set. And when he creates the data set, he has to indicate the authors. So as a contributor, he will indicate the names and the details of all the, uh, the, the authors of that particular data set. And once he's uploaded the data set, then that data set becomes available to the freshwater admin who can then uh, alert the reviewers that are on the list, like who have been added to the reviewer panel of this Malawi Biodiversity Portal, that a new data set has been added. They need to go in access that database, that, that data set, and then review it. So if I log out now as a contributor, I can now go in right now as a reviewer. This is a, a small group of uh, experienced uh, 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 freshwater biodiversity experts who are able to at least identify any anomalies that may be apparent in the data, and then they can give their comments. So for a data set, we, we alert at least three, three reviewers and ask them to go through the data set. So when a reviewer logs in, he's able to see data sets that have been uploaded. And when he goes through the data sets, he's also able to make comments. And those comments will be available to the admin here at Luana, so that when we meet together and we go through the reviews, we can either get back to the contributor and ask him to make corrections, or uh, depending on the types of uh, issues that have been uh, uh, raised, we may have to talk to the publisher and indicate to them that maybe the data that has been uploaded is not up to uh, the quality that we, we would accept within the Malawi Biodiversity Portal. So the reason we do this is uh, sometimes students would want to contribute, but maybe sometimes they don't want to follow the protocol. So we would like to put all those checks and balances and make sure that whatever has been uploaded on the Malawi Biodiversity Portal, it is uh, up to the standard that we are looking for. So that's basically, uh, what I wanted to highlight regarding the data control mechanisms that we have put in place. And then from now, uh, I can move on to the ODK app, which we uh, created. Uh, not exactly the app itself, because the ODK platform has already been developed by uh, the Michigan State University and they keep on maintaining it and upgrading it. So we have built forms within the ODK app, which we have been using to make it easier for us to mobilize data. So I will quickly just show you um, some of the uh, tools that we have been using. 
So I will just highlight here uh, the reason why we decided to introduce ODK within this project. What we learned was that in Malawi, most of the data collection in the fisheries sector, especially, has been done using hard copies. So if you go to the fisheries department and check how they collect data, it's mostly uh, filled hard copies which they fill in. And then they, when they get back to the office, transfer that information to Excel. And then they can summarize and make the summaries available. But the reason we decided to actually prompt them to test uh, a mobile application was we felt that they are doing that work twice. They go to the field, collect data, come to the office, and they have to enter it again. So we wanted to get rid of that uh, uh, duplication by introducing a mobile application, which they can use in the field, collect the data, and then they can automatically transfer that data to an electronic uh, format in the computer, particularly in Excel. So once they have transferred that information to Excel, then we develop uh, an automatic, uh, maybe uh, an automated way of processing that data so that it is in the format that they would prefer to summarize it. So this was the whole idea why we introduced ODK. And uh, the other reason we chose to use ODK was that uh, we did not want to go through the whole development process of a custom mobile application because that would take a whole lot of time on the project. So we chose to use an existing system. We knew that there would be limitations that we cannot extract the data in the format that we want it exactly but we felt it would be a very good starting point as a step towards developing a, a custom app that we can use in the fishery sector in Malawi. And within that app, we can incorporate data fields that allow us to track and monitor biodiversity data as well. And in addition to that, we are able to capture uh, coordinates alongside the fish data we are able to also take photographs alongside the data that is being collected. So those were the main reasons. So what we did was to install uh, the server software, which is what I'm showing you now. And within that server software, we have the freshwater site and we have the pollinator site. So in the freshwater site, for example, we have our users who have been registered there who can access this site. And then when they enter the site, they are able to see the forms that we have developed so far. As we improve on the forms, we update the version. So we don't get rid of the previous forms that we have been using in the field. We keep on adding them. So far, we have developed three types of forms. The monitoring data mobilization form for field work. When we go to the field and we are collecting data together with the fisheries department, then we use that particular form. Uh, we have the museum data mobilization form, which we have used so far at the Luana Museum, and we have been able to mobilize close to 80% of the specimens that we have. And we have also uh, a thesis data mobilization uh, form, which we have tested and used to mobilize at least data from, I think, three pieces so far. And so all these forms, are also accessible when you now open ODK within the, in the mobile phone, right in the field, or you, we, we give the credentials, the login credentials, and with those login credentials, uh, these forms pop up on the phone. And when they pop up on the phone, uh, then we have the various fields which the user can complete. And after that, he can submit the data and that data is available on the on the uh, on the ODK server, so I can maybe just illustrate with the faces data. At least we have three submissions there. So this is some of the data that we have so far been able to mobilize with the uh, ODK mobile app. So I will try to show you something uh, 
on the phone, uh, which I recorded. So let me just check if I'm able to access it now. Uh, so just a moment. There we go. Okay, so let me first of all show you this. So I just want to give you a, a picture of uh, the improvement in the data that we are able to capture right in the field. So this is a photograph which we are able to capture right in the field using a mobile phone. And to us, it felt, well, it's not excellent as if we, we, we could capture this in the lab with a very good high definition camera, but it still gives us an idea of how the specimen looks look, look like right in the field. So we can check the classification, whether the field officer classified this species correctly. And that can be a way of uh, checking the quality. That's another picture which we also took. So we have so many pictures of this kind, but these were all being taken right in the field. Uh, and you can see the shadow showing that we had uh, sunshine and it was a bit difficult to completely get rid of the shadows. But with these pictures, we felt that if we later on have a workshop to check the data and oh. we have experts coming in. Hello? Uh, uh, the I, uh, we Andy, we actually just can't the see the images at the moment. Yes. Mm -hmm. As you're talking about, Mm -hmm. yeah, they, they can't be seen here, did you? Oh, sorry, that? sorry, sorry. Sorry, so just a moment while I, so I will stop sharing and uh, share again. Okay, so let me share the actual pictures now. Uh -huh. Okay, great, we can see, thank you. Great, so uh, I just wanted you to appreciate uh, the pictures that we were able to capture in the field. So this is uh, one of the pictures that we were able to capture with a mobile phone. Uh, and then uh, that's the second picture I was talking about. And uh, that's another picture that uh, we also captured in the field. So we had like teams of uh, three teams, each team having about four members and uh, one person on the mobile application, another person handling the fish itself and uh, the other two uh, taking some hard copy information that would check cross check with the ODK information that we have captured. And uh, these are some of the uh, photographs that we were able to capture. So as I was uh, uh, saying, the main reason was we wanted to be able to verify whether our fisheries department officers who go out and uh, uh, do the taxonomical identification of the fishes are really doing a good job. So if, if we can verify that, then we can maybe uh, see whether the data that we are getting is uh, of good quality or if we need to maybe uh, make some changes, some improvements, some trainings and, and the like. So the experts who will help us with the data quality checks, will provide them with all this information, the occurrence data that we have collected and so on and so forth. And then we provide them with the corresponding pictures so they can vet this and maybe give us their uh, feel. Lastly, I will just show you um, some of the data that we have so far been able to get from the museum. This is some of the data, occurrence data, which is going to be published uh, on GBIF once we have finalized the MBP portal and we have it published there. And uh, hopefully we'll just be able to press a button with an API and be able to transfer everything uh, once the data, the Malawi Biodiversity Portal has been fully polished. Uh, I will also show you another data set. This is occurrence data, but we have also uh, started working on event data because we, are, we realized that we are going to be going to the field 
the same sites where we have been collecting data over and over. So we felt, why don't we present our data as event data? And uh, within that event data, we have occurrence data, we have some measurements. So we can probably, if we do this for some uh, a long period, we can use this for research purposes as well. So what we'll be doing with the event data is we'll take it to GBIF and publish it there. But on the Malawi Biodiversity Portal, we'll just be publishing for now the occurrence data uh, because we haven't yet built in features for uh, uploading event data. So that's how we are going to be doing it for now. So that's that. Um, I may also uh, soon be able to just play a video which shows you um, how we, right, I think it's ready. So just a moment. So I will again share another screen which just shows you how we have been able to use the mobile app in the, in the field and uh, be able to um, capture this data. So there we are. Sorry, maybe not like that. Uh, okay, there we go. Right, so I hope you are able to see. So this is the mobile application. Uh, very handy because to develop these forms, it only takes two or three days and you are good to go to the field and start the data collection. And within the OTK app, you are able to set predefined fields which someone can just, the user can just pick from a drop list. So that way we avoid spelling mistakes and the like. Uh, plus you may not be able to remember all the scientific names uh, together with their, uh, their spellings. But uh, with this, you are able to at least I uh, just type the first few letters of that maybe name of uh, genus or a specific epithet and it will pop up. And so we found that this was easier, especially for those who are not really used to scientific names in the field. So this is basically what we have come up with. Uh, so Msekiwa will probably talk about uh, the next few activities that we have in the pipeline, which are building on what we have so far learned through this GBI, GIS, GRS project. Yeah, I think I can stop here. Thank you. Tell me how many minutes do we have? I think about 12, okay. about 10, 12 minutes. All right, thanks. Yeah, um, my presentation will, will be very brief um, up to the point. Um, so let me just uh, share my screen. Yeah, um, so just building on from um, the technical issues of what Chikondi uh, has shared, uh, Chikondi, Noel, Emmanuel. Um, now moving forward, um, as Emmanuel may have mentioned that um, the initiative has gotten interest um, of other stakeholders, especially the, the Malawi government department of fisheries because uh, the current system is still that uh, they use uh, hard copies uh, hard forms, hard copy forms uh, to go and collect data, but then um, there are so many hiccups that are going on, and um, hence the essence of the project uh, that we were doing um, in 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 using the ODK app and also putting up the portal and and all that all those initiatives that are in place. So learning on this um, aside fisheries, um, we also have issues of aquaculture. Uh, in the country that are also managed by the Department of Fisheries and they have a similar need, but they could not be covered uh, under this project. Um, are we all able to see? Nsekiwa, Nsekiwa, if you could perhaps just go on to, there you go, thank you very much. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so we have um, an aquaculture development uh, watershed uh, management project, uh, which is called CIFAT. Uh, this project is mainly under the Malawi government department of fisheries. 
and it's, it's being supported by the African uh, Development Bank. Um, uh, it has several components, uh, but then on our side, um, drawing from the lessons uh, in this project, um, it was agreed uh, that uh, Luana leads in the development of a similar program, but then for aquaculture, where we would, uh, would, uh, would profile uh, fish farmers and, and also different, uh, different information that is there in terms of aquaculture and digitize uh, the system on the data collection. Uh, processes. Um, so Luana is the lead uh, is the lead in this particular component. Uh, but of course, we are working with other organizations uh, such as the Innovative Fish Farmers Network, uh, which is the network of fish farmers in the country. Um, so who have been doing similar initiatives, but they were still using Excel after they collect the data. But then uh, the systems still needed to be improved. So we'll be working together, and of course, the DOF is the Department of Fisheries, which has um, uh, fisheries officers across across the country. So once we develop this system, the main uptake will be the Department of Fisheries um, that the technical people on the ground uh, should be able to use uh, to use those um, uh, those forms. Just a minute. Yeah, um, so I've already explained the objectives uh, that we need to electronize uh, the whole system uh, in which uh, we are to do the data collection. So now we, uh, this is drawing lessons from, from, from the project that was uh, funded by GRS. Um, now we had to say, okay, if we are to do this work, uh, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. So we, we decided that we are going to use the same team uh, that is on the ground, uh, having Nagsoft as the lead, as the lead developer to develop a similar system where we would have a portal where um, there'll be like profiles of fish farmers. Uh, we would use the same Luana ICT uh, team, uh, whose capacity actually has been built uh, through this project. So it will be now uh, more of a faster process than uh, this one because we had to take about a year to develop the system, but we are anticipating that in a month or two, we should be able to, to develop um, a little bit more based, uh, considering that uh, most of the groundwork is already there. Actually, in fact, uh, what we are thinking at the moment is that uh, we use uh, the same portal, like the back end. Uh, we just stretch it out that we have um, the fish farmers and the fish farms uh, database uh, in place, uh, but using the same uh, the same portal that was um, that was that you have just seen. So it will be an extension an extension to that, um, so that uh, we make use of it, um, and that it also has um, quite it's more usable other than just biodiversity. Uh, people have have another angle in which they can use um, uh, they can use the system. And what we have also learned is um, the use of the mobile application. Um, at the moment, um, we used ODK, but then we have learned a few things uh, with the advancement of technology. At the moment, um, we are going for the option that we should use uh, Flutter. Um, if we have more, if we have questions uh, like detailed uh, on how the app will be developed, uh, we have uh, the technical team that is um, right online, uh, including Nagsoft. They are going to explain more, but then uh, the development process has already started. What we are anticipating at the moment is that uh, within month of August, we are going to have our first uh, interaction uh, meeting, virtual meeting uh, with, um, with our end users uh, in which they are, they'll be able to see uh, like the first the first outlook on how the the profiles will be looking like uh, on the on the portal and also um, on how the the actual application uh, can be used and just to mention that um, since this is about aquaculture we had to look at uh, the forms the data collection forms that the department is currently using uh, the innovative fish farmers network which also did uh, profiling of fish farmers uh, but then there, were, uh, there was a project on aquaculture value chain uh, funded by the GIZ. And of course, there is a similar program uh, by World Fish. Uh, so these are some of the things that we are drawing our lessons from.
Yeah, so just to wrap it up is that um, the initiatives that we have, uh, the opportunity that we had uh, using the GRS funding, um, it has attracted uh, attention and it's, it's more relevant and we have moved on uh, to this current, uh, current project. Um, that's all that I had to share.